If Garp actually fought a Kaido in Marine Ford, would he have been able to defeat him? Would Garp have been arrested or even executed for betraying the Marines? If he was arrested as a criminal, what would his potential bounty be? How would this single event change the course of fate for the Marines and even the world? Wizard of Ors here today, and in this video, I'll answer every single one of these questions with an in-depth analysis as to why. Some of the conclusions that I came up with from the evidence from the manga completely blew my mind. And to start everything off, let's first look at how he would even approach Akainu in the first place. And just keep in mind, the ace literally just got hold in one. So, for this to even happen, the situation for Garp would have to be completely different from what actually happened. I mean, the only reason he didn't fight Akainu was because Sengoku stopped him in his tracks and kept him face down to the floor until he calmed down. This couldn't have happened for Garp to attack and some possibilities for Sengoku to not notice Garp would be that maybe Whitebeard attacks Marineford head on after Ace's death. We know that Whitebeard wanted his family to escape so he could have separated his family from himself and attacked Marineford head on before going after Akainu. If this happened then Sengoku would have been forced to do something about the situation and he probably wouldn't have noticed Garp. And so as Marineford base is being crushed, Sengoku would command Aokiji to freeze the entire base, to stop it from complete destruction, and as this is happening, the marines see their old vice admiral Garp walking onto the battlefield towards Whitebeard. After Whitebeard broke the island, he would have headed over to Sakazuki to get his revenge after killing Ace. The same fight between Whitebeard and Akainu happens. Whitebeard gives him a few bone breaking blows while Akainu blows his head off, and after the last hit from Whitebeard happens, Akainu is just about to fall into the depths of the earth when the hero of the marine shows up. The marine Green soldiers watching this get excited as it looks like he's finally gonna defeat Whitebeard just as he did Rocks. Garp starts walking over to Whitebeard with a cold mean mugging face and then everyone starts to notice something strange. He kept walking past Whitebeard. At this point, Sengoku notices what Garp is really about to do, but it's just too late. Just as Akainu is about to fall into the core of the earth, Garp picks him up by his clothes and punches him in the face, which sends him flying across the battlefield. Once this happens, everyone is shook and the chaos escalates. The admirals are just about to fly in to stop Garp, but then the Blackbeard pirates show up, and they're forced to protect headquarters, which allows the perfect opportunity for Garp and Akainu to go at it one on one. So now, before we get into anything else, how strong even is Garp at at this point in the story? Is he even stronger than Akainu during the pre-time skip? Well, I personally think so, and let me explain why. So I'd assume that Prime Garp was pretty much on the same level or tier as Prime Whitebeard, which would mean that Old Garp should theoretically be even stronger than Old Whitebeard, and the reason for this is simple. If Prime Whitebeard pretty much equals Prime Garp, then Old and Sick Whitebeard is less than Old Garp. It's a pretty simple math equation to be honest. I mean, we see throughout Marineford how badly Whitebeard's sickness affects him, when he starts grabbing his chest mid-battle and then takes a blow from Akainu because of this. Like, let's be real, that blow would have never landed if Whitebeard didn't have a semi-chest attack right beforehand, and we even see people like Croc, who knew the strongest man when he truly was that title, call the current Whitebeard a weakling. And, by the way, Crocoboy boy over here definitely shouldn't be talking because, like, didn't you lose to pre-gear 2 Luffy? But anyways, so now I also believe that this old dying Whitebeard was still stronger than Marine Fort Akainu. Like, if they fought one-on-one -on -one with no one else around, I'm pretty sure Whitebeard would have been the last man standing. And if this is the case, then you already know who I believe would have won between Garp and Akainu. Plus, on top of all this, this isn't just Garp that we're talking about, but it's actually Mad Garp, which means his strength would have been closer to how he was in his prime, simply because of his adrenaline. I mean, if you've already heard of the grand any adrenaline story, then you already know what people are capable of doing under certain circumstances. I also want to point out that pre-time skip Akainu is most definitely likely weaker than he is now, since I'd expect him to awaken many new hockey abilities and devil fruit abilities during his 10 day battle with Aokiji. Basically, I just wanted to say that current Akainu is probably on a whole nother level compared to his younger self. And so now that you know that I believe Garp would have defeated Akainu, how would the fight actually go? Well, I think Akainu would definitely still be a little dazed after getting the crap beat out of him by both Whitebeard and Garp's punch that I mentioned earlier in the video, and Garp would then jump towards the area that he previously sent Akainu flying. Now, while this happens, simultaneously, Whitebeard begins his fight with Blackbeard. This would be showing the ultimate parallel with a pirate versus pirate and marine versus marine. On top of this, it's even a pirate from the old generation facing one of his sons that he watched grow up, just as a marine from the old generation is facing one of his soldiers that he watched grow up into the man he is today. Whitebeard will also be fighting Blackbeard because he 
took away one of his family members' lives from him. Just like how Garp will be fighting Akainu because he also took away one of his family members' lives. And now, since Akainu is already a little beat up, and since Garp is fresh, Garp would rage on him and continuously punch him until there's nothing left more of him. I do think Akainu would give him a burn scar, however, it's nothing to take the marine goat down. I also do think it's proof when Garp says, Hold me back, just like that Sen Goku. Otherwise, I'm gonna kill that Sakazuki. That he literally would've killed him if he went out to fight him. And now, how he would've is up to debate. You know, maybe he would've punched his head right off his body. Or maybe he would've given Akainu a donut just like Ace. And I mean, we do know that Garb tried to break the world record for donuts eaten in a row. So maybe this would be a new record that he'd break, which is giving someone the biggest donut in the world. I mean, this shouldn't be that hard since the only other competitor in this category would be Akainu with is. But anyways, I do believe this would all have to happen before Whitebeard's final words, because that moment is just too legendary to happen with something else happening at the same time. Whitebeard would need his shine to die standing and to say, So after all this happens, pretty much everything else that takes place happens. For example, Blackbeard still gets a second fruit, Sengoku still fights off the Blackbeard pirates, and Luffy still escapes with Jinbei. There would be a few minor changes, for example, Luffy wouldn't get his scar from Akainu, and Kobe would still yell out to stop the war. However, this time, Akainu wouldn't be there to turn him into lava sauce, and this also makes me wonder, like, doesn't it almost seem like Akainu deliberately goes against people that Garp loves? For example, he obviously killed Ace, who died saving Luffy from Akainu, and then he even tried to kill Garp's favorite rookie marine. Like, bro, do these two have some history of beef that we don't know about? Like, seriously, thank god Shanks came in to save Kobe because if that didn't happen, Garp versus Akainu would have 100% went down. But now, going back to the war, I believe we'd still see Shanks stop in the war, and this time, he may clash with someone else like Blackbeard or another admiral. Ben Beckman would still have his legendary moment with Kizaru in order to save Luffy's life, and the war would end with three major deaths instead of two. Garp would be charged with second degree murder, and Sengoku himself would probably have to be the one to calm him down and cuff him up. I could imagine him only saying two words to Garp, which are, you fool. Garp's new nickname may go from being the hero of the marines to the marine murderer, or maybe even to the traitor of the marines. And so now, with all this being said, let's go into the next thing that would have happened, which would be his public execution. Okay, so now I know you may be thinking that a public execution held for Garp wouldn't be the best idea for the world government, because like we've seen before, that the government has never been able to fire, let go, or attack Garp because it would destroy their reputation since they can't even respect the one guy who is literally the hero of the marines. You may think that many average citizens may turn against the government if they did such a thing to Garp right? Well, yes, this is true while his reputation was still clean. However, after killing an admiral, I don't think the government would allow this opportunity to kill Garp slip, and proof of this is in chapter 957. First off, notice how we see Sengoku say that it's only Garp's accomplishments and stature that keep him from being eliminated for his insubordination. This proves that the world government already wanted to kill him, but they couldn't do so for obvious reasons. On top of this, this chapter also shows us that literally no one from the new era knows about how Garp even received his nickname of the Hero of the Marines, showing that most of them would look upon him as a betrayer or traitor and not as someone who defeated the most dangerous pirate crew of all time. The whole God Valley incident is erased from history, so most people would just see Garp as a guy that doesn't obey the Celestial Dragons and as a man who kills his own people. The news would definitely make the worst possible situation for Garp, since we know they consistently lie or exaggerate stories to the public. So now that you understand all of this, I truly believe they would hold a public execution to make it a statement as to what happens if any marine betrays his own people or betrays the world government, but how would this actually go down? Would Garp survive and escape the execution? Well, stay tuned to see how I think it goes down. So first off, the execution would be located in the very place that he committed the ultimate crime which is Marine Ford, and Aokiji would have become the fleet admiral so he would be on the execution platform with Garp, and two random marines would be the ones to behead him. I think retired Sengoku wouldn't be there. Just just like how Ray Lee wasn't there at Roger's execution. However, I could see Kong and Suru being in the front row of the crowd, and Kobe would probably be somewhere in the back, crying like the little girl that he is. Just kidding, I actually love Kobe, he's a good guy. And actually, you know what? Here's a riddle for you. What do you get when you put pink hair on top of a crybaby? Well, if you guessed Kobe, wrong. You actually get Shirahoshi, however Kobe still does fit the description, so I'll give you a pat on the back if you guess either one. Now, going back to the execution, 
All of the other marines that loved Garp would also be in there trying to hold back their tears, as one of them that he saved or rescued yells out emotionally, Why'd you do it? The Garp that I knew would never betray his men. This is a direct parallel with the savage that asked Goldie Roger about the One Piece right before his execution. Garp would reply with a legendary quote just like Roger and say, I did it because I have no sympathy for criminals, but for my family, I do. This line will hit so much harder because the sympathy that he has for his family made him the one thing he doesn't sympathize for, which is a criminal. Now, as he says this, Aokija commands the two men on the platform to execute Garp, and as they swing down their swords with full force, everyone stares in awe. The swords don't touch. Garp's mastered congress hockey combined with his Rio doesn't allow the swords to touch him. As this happens, he smiles, yells at his former marine friends that he'll always look out for them, and then breaks the chains. He then leaps for his escape when Aokiji remembers the favor that he once owed him. Aokiji also remembers what Akainu did at Ohara and remembers that he didn't even like the guy. And so then he attacks Garp half-heartedly and Garp easily breaks out of the ice. Garp charges for his freedom and most of the marines do nothing about it simply because of the sheer respect that they owe him. A few guys do try to attack Garp, but he pretty much just knocks them out in one blow, which leads me to the ultimate confrontation. Green Bull, being the celestial dragon and a Kanu stand that he is, he's furious at Garp and tries to take revenge on him. He attacks him and calls him every name in the book. Garp would overall win the clash and escape, but because of this, Green Bull immediately gets promoted to being an admiral. Garp being the experienced marine that he is, easily steals a ship and escapes the gates of justice. And so now that you know how I think he would go rogue, now let's talk about what he would actually do as one of the most famous criminals in the world. So the first thing Garp would do is tell you to like this video and subscribe to the channel because he would be happy that someone isn't making him seem like a crazy person, unlike the newspapers. He would also say that he has leaked intel that this channel will post an insane dragon theory in upcoming weeks, so subscribe if you want to see that. The next thing he'd do is go to Don Island to confront Dadan and Makino in the same way that he did before. After he does this is where the interesting stuff happens, but before that, let me just explain to you really briefly what I think Garp's bounty would be and why it's higher than Big Mom's and Kaido's. So basically, I think his bounty would be almost 5 billion and probably right around 4.9. And now you may ask, well, why? Well, think about it. Garp is a former Marine, which means he literally knows the ins and outs of the world government, and he probably knows a lot of their secrets as well. That instantly makes him one of their biggest threats, since he can practically use his whole life's knowledge on destroying the world government if he wanted to. They also personally know that he doesn't mess with the Celestial Dragons, so they may fear a direct attack from him. Secondly, he literally killed an Admiral, and not only any Admiral, but the specific one that the government wanted to be, the next Fleet Admiral. It seemed like it was the five elders who were the ones who proposed the idea of Akainu being Flea instead of Aokiji, since we see Jinbei say that dignitaries within the world government strongly pushed for it to be Akainu. Now just think about this logically, imagine if someone in One Piece legitimately killed an admiral. Like has anyone ever even done that? I feel like anyone who commits that extreme of a crime alone would be instantly pushed up to at least 3 billion berries. The third reason Garp is pushed up to 4.9 though is because of his knowledge on God Valley, rocks, and Roger. We see that the most wanted people ever, being Roger, Whitebeard, Big Mom, Kaido, and arguably Rox, all had something to do with God Valley. Part of the reason for their bounty being so high could be that they saw something there that they shouldn't have. And so, anyways, with these reasons, what do you think Garf's bounty would be? Let me know what and why in the comments because it's just such an interesting topic to think about. Also, his ship's Jolly Roger would be a dog that has a bone in its mouth just like his marine ship's figurehead. And now, to what Garp would actually do as an individual, personally, I think he'd do three things. First, he'd probably be involved with Sword. This would be allowed because we know that Kobe is in it and we also know that if Aokiji found out about this, he would probably allow it to continue and would keep it on the low. I personally think Aokiji may actually be in Sword or at least has ties with them in the real story and you can watch my whole theory on that after this video and I'll leave the link in the description. And if this is even somewhat true, then he may be connected with Sword in this false story as well. If Aokiji knew about this, then he could secretly communicate with Garp and send him on certain missions that no one else could accomplish but him. This also connects with the second thing that I think he'd do, which is become a vigilante and bounty hunter. In fact, I actually thought of the perfect mission for Garb to accomplish. So in case you forgot, 
Blackbeak broke out, many prisoners from the cells in level 6. He only took 4 of them and apparently there were so many more who escaped. Sengoku himself said that any prisoner from level 6 could cause unimaginable chaos simply by infiltrating a nation. And now, the interesting part of this whole thing is the fact that the world government didn't allow the creation of a single wanna poster for any of these criminals. In fact, the whole incident was covered up. And so, knowing this, I'd assume that Garp's next mission would be to recapture and turn in every single one of these criminals that never became known to the public. He'd probably go after them one by one from weakest to strongest and would have the way to go after the Blackbeard Pirates because them all being on one crew makes it an extremely dangerous mission. I mean, I could even see him eventually going off to face Blackbeard due to the fact that Kobe got captured just like how he did this in the real story. Now overall, the best comparison to him at this point would be Aokiji, like you know how Aokiji is doing crazy things things, like teaming up with Blackbeard and stuff like that. Well, I don't necessarily think Garp would ever team up with the pirate, however I do believe the comparison of him being on his own is best paralleled with Aokiji being on his own. And who knows, the first time we'd probably see Garp in the post time skip would be when Doflamingo is about to kill Smoker and just as Aokiji showed up at the last second to save his old friend, I think this time it'd be reversed with Garp. Okay, so now the third action I think he might take is having close ties with the revolutionary army and I think when he first meets up with them, he'd realize that Dragon took in the boy that wanted to become a pirate with Luffy and Ace has kids. Garp and Sabo would have an emotional moment as they make cry over Ace's death and after this, Garp would discuss politics and grown up stuff with Dragon and he'd probably even tell him what he's gonna do from here on out as a vigilante. These two seem to have a very strange and secretive bond and I can honestly also see a timeline where Garp doesn't go to meet with his Son. Now, whatever happens to Garp will probably remain on the low and Luffy will probably find out everything that his grandpa did when he goes to Fisherman Island. This would be an insane moment because Luffy wouldn't have even known about Garp killing Akainu since he would have already been knocked out at that point in Marineford. And so now that I've explained everything on what Garp would actually do, now let me tell you how this one action of killing Akainu would have completely changed the course of the Marines. So first off, the most obvious change to the current timeline would be the fact that Aokiji would be Fleet Admiral instead of Akainu. I feel like instead of fighting Sakazuki at Punk Hazard, he still would have had to fight Kizaru because just as I said before, it seems like the highest powers in the world government didn't want Aokiji as Fleet even though Sengoku recommended him. Now I know Kizaru doesn't seem like the most passionate marine or anything like that, but he still does have his own justice and would want to take the top position. He is still the same guy who offers to go to Wano to fight both Big Mom and Kai and the same guy who wants to go after Gear 5 Luffy at Egghead Island. I feel like the fight between him and Aokiji would only last 5 days instead of 10 because I do believe Aokiji and Akainu to be stronger than him, however going head to head for 5 or so days is still pretty damn impressive. Another huge difference with this fight would be the fact that after losing, Kizaru would stay as an admiral unlike how Aokiji completely left. The reason for this would be the simple fact that it doesn't seem like Kizaru has major beef with anyone in the marines in the same way that Aokiji and Akainu do. And now with Aokiji as fleet, I feel like the biggest difference would be that he would go back to be in burning or fired up justice. That's right, he used to be fired up justice all the way up until the Ohara incident and after he witnessed this, he lost a lot of his passion for being a marine and became lazy justice and this most likely happened because he started to doubt if the marines truly were even justice at all. He started to become unsure about his own profession so he became lazy and would only do what he believed was justice and not just what the world government wanted him to do. I feel like as fleet, he would get a lot of room to do what he truly believes is right which would surely bring back at least some of that passion. This however would lead to major conflict with the higher ups because he wouldn't want to listen to them or may just not listen to them at all. We even saw Sakazuki get furious with the five elders as they didn't tell him about Doflamingo's warlord situation and if this happened with Aokiji, boy oh boy, I could only imagine how he would react. Like he may eventually end up being a cause of a civil war within the government. Now, one of the biggest changes that Akainu made as Fleet Admiral was moving Marineford Base over to the New World side of the Grand Line instead of keeping it on Paradise or the first half of the Grand Line. I bring this up because I think Aokiji would also do this himself because after Marineford, we see him talking to his buddy Smoker, where Smoker asks him about his transfer to G5. Smoker tells him that he wants to go to 
this specific navy branch because he wants to go to the new world to keep his enemies close. And I feel like this may convince Aokiji that it's best to move the marines over to the new world for this exact reason. Like I mean, at this point in the story, the biggest threats are all in the new world, especially since all the worst generation just headed over there and it would still be very tough to control the whole grand line since Whitebeard still would have sparked a new age of piracy after confirming that the One Piece is real so it would be really interesting to see how Aokiji does with his job. I feel like the hardest thing he'd have to do is gain the world citizens trust back because after seeing Garp obliterate a kind on world television they may not be as trustworthy with the marines. And I mean why would they trust them after seeing that people within the world government don't even get along. Another change that happened with the marines after marineford was the two new admirals and with Sakazuki dead they would still need to replace two which would ultimately lead to both Green Bull and Fujitora taking the positions and I feel like Fuji would get along with Aokiji however I'm not That's so sure about racist. Green Bull. But anyways this pretty much wraps up everything I wanted to say on this topic and if you want to know one of the best One Piece theories revolving around Aokiji being in sword then click on this video right here.